Hello, the point of this video is to show you how to take your echo meter touch recordings that you are getting using your echo meter touch and your, your phone or your tablet, whatever it is that you're using and how to upload them on iNaturalist. When I first started doing this, what I would do, which is what a lot of people do is just take a screenshot, you know, pressing maybe two buttons at the same time on my phone and then just taking that screenshot and posting it on iNaturalist like this. And that's that's an option you can do it, and it you know it works. But uh, it does look a little pixelated, and you know if you want to get kind of more into this, where you're going to be analyzing the calls yourself and making sure that the identifications are correct, it's better to upload these onto your computer and then you know view them with software. So I use software. It's called Kaleidoscope. It's from Wildlife Acoustics as well, just like the the Echo Meter Touch bat detector. And it, it kind of gives you a lot more detail and a lot more options for analyzing your, you know, these bat recordings that you're getting using this device. So this is an example of the same species, right? Both of them are Florida bonneted bats. But this one, this is a photo or a screenshot of that call sequence on Kaleidoscope. So you can see there's a lot more detail. It's not so pixelated. And again, there are a bunch of options for viewing the call. You know, you see this option. This isn't something that I know of that you can do on the Echo Meter Touch app, but you can do it through the software. So the first step again would be to get that recording, right? Get it on your, your phone or your tablet and upload it to your computer. So usually you're going to have to use a USB cable. I don't know if you might be able to do that, you know, emailing it to yourself or uploading it to a cloud or something through that tablet or phone but I usually just use the cable and hook it up to my computer, right? So what I use is an Amazon Fire tablet. So you see it right here under my PC. I'm gonna open that up. Usually it'll be in a folder called Echo Meter. I mean, that's at least how it works for the, the Fire tablet. And then under recordings, uh, I only have one session here because I try to keep this empty so that the storage in my, my tablet isn't all taken up. And so I'm going to copy this folder and put it into my computer. I have a, a specific folder that I do that with. Here it is, Echo Meter Touch Bat Calls. I'm just gonna paste it in here, right? So you see it here. Uh, something that I recommend for you know just being organized is to add the location. Um, I never have the location services on my tablet because it's I strictly bought it for uploading, you know, for, for the Echo Meter. So I don't, you know, it doesn't have location services. I don't know how that works because I don't have it connected to a, a plan or anything like that. There's no data on it. Um, but I took these around West Kendall, right? And I'll remember where that was. And so now I want to view them through that software that I mentioned to you. Uh, to get the software, if you don't already have it, again, it's called Kaleidoscope. And uh, it's by Wildlife Acoustics. You can just Google search this and it should pop up. Let me make sure that I'm... Right, it's called, I think Kaleidoscope Viewer is the free version, but everything it seems is gonna take you to the Kaleidoscope Pro version. And you know, that's because Kaleidoscope wants to take some more of your money. Uh, nothing against that, right? I know the software, the Pro version probably does amazing things, but we only really need the free version. But so let's say it takes you to the screen, you can click over here where it says resources and then downloads. And then you're gonna have to log in to be able to see the screen, I think. Um, but the one we want is called Kaleidoscope Analysis Software. And again, at some point, it should ask you to log in. See, it shows me here is logged in. You're going to click on this little check bo checkbox and then download, and then it should download, right? So here it is. I have it pinned to my, my Windows taskbar. Pretty sure you can see that. And it's always going to pop up with an ad for you to download the latest software. But, you know, for hobbyists like me and citizen scientists like myself, I'm not going to, you know, spend that much money. I already spent enough on the little uh, bat recording. So from here, you're going to click file and then open. And then you're going to find the, the recording that you want to look at, right? So the one that I uploaded a little while ago, let's see, it's Echo Meter Touch Bat Calls is the folder I'm using. And then it's this one down here that says West Kendall. I'm going to hit open and then it shows me the recordings that I got during that session. So let's go with this first one, which should be a Florida bonneted bat. I'm going to hit open gonna pop up right and then so now I'm viewing that recording using this software right so you can see there it might pop up in a different way for you it might be showing up this way for me because I've already kind of messed with the parameters a little bit 
Um, so I'll talk about them really quick. Um, one of the main ones that you're going to be using is this one down here with these three lines that allows you to go between having the normal time view or the compressed time view. Right now, this is the compressed time view. So let's look at the normal time view, right? So you see here that we're talking about 0, 0.0 seconds. So up to this point is one second. This is another second. So you see how many calls are falling into that time frame. And I'm going to click over here, toggle zoom to fit on time axis which is going to let me kind of see everything in one shot. So it's taking me all the way to the end, right? If I press it again, it'll kind of zoom back into where I had it. If I want to zoom in on the time, right? You see how the time is changing. Now we're at 0 0.2 seconds in this area. I can zoom in a little bit more and then the call might become more um, or the details of the call become more clear. Instead of it just looking like a little quick line, you can sort of see the shape that the call has. All right, but let me go back. So that it shows the whole call by clicking this button again. Um, and again, this is the, the full time scale. If I click it again, what it does is it takes all of these little gaps in between the calls, right, that you can see here, and it eliminates them so that all I have are the calls. And while doing that, it also zooms me in. So now we're this space here is 20 milliseconds, right? 100 milliseconds, uh, I think 100 milliseconds is 0 0.1 second, right? And then if I press this again, you'll see how the time goes back to being one second, two second, right? So this gives you a lot, uh, a much better view of the detail of the call. Another thing that you can mess with here is the frequency axis. So that lets you zoom in, you know, if you want to kind of see the calls taking up more space and just kind of see more detail, you can press this again, it'll zoom it all the way out so that you can see all the way up to the top of where your echo meter will record, which is up to around 125 kilohertz. And then you can see that this call is falling uh, pretty mostly below 25 and then also well, really below 20 kilohertz is where the majority or the strongest part of the call is coming through. So let me show you how to take a screenshot, right? So this is a good example of what you would want to take a screenshot of the compressed view showing the whole entire call because that gives you a good idea of uh, what's going on. If you want to zoom in again a little bit more, you can click this button so that that'll make it kind of zoom in more. Um, I don't know, I'm not really used to seeing it so zoomed in though. So I'm gonna actually just leave it like this or maybe zoom in a little bit more, scroll back down. So you get more detail on the call, but you still kind of have that standard view to compare it to other back calls. All right, then you click file, save screen, and that's gonna give you the option to save it. The standard will be as a JPEG. I don't think you could save it as any other file using the software, at least not the free version. And then you might want to add a little bit of detail on what, you know, you're, you're saving here, what the screenshot is of. So I have this right now as compressed, right? So if you want to put compressed here, um, and then it's the whole call, right? Or if you want to maybe, you know, abbreviate that, you could put C for compressed and W for the whole call. And I'm going to hit save, and then that's saving it to my computer. Okay, so let me show you how it would work to upload that. And, you know, that's just one um, screenshot that I have. I'm going to want to put more so that you kind of have different views. But um, what I like to do is upload it by dragging it. So let me find it. It was right here, session. And then you can see that it's, you know, these are all audio. And then this is the JPEG here. And if you want, you could also, you know, view it as an icon so that I, I know what I'm working with. So there it is. I'm putting it in here right? You're going to notice it doesn't give you the date. It doesn't give you the location or the species, right? Normally when you upload a photo onto iNaturalist, it should have a, I think it's called metadata, which will give you information on the time and the date. And then if you had location services or something, you know, giving a GPS point, it'll also populate the location when you, you know, put it onto that upload screen on iNaturalist. In this case, it doesn't give you anything. So you need to go back and look at the detail of the file. Um, so you can see it here again. This is the name that the echo meter gives it automatically. It gives it the, the species name and then it'll give you the date. So 2019 was the year 07 is the month and then it gives you the day. So this was on July 5th, 2019. So I'm going to go back to July, July 5th, 2019. And then it's giving me kind of like a default of when I dragged it in there. So it says 401 PM. Um, but this wasn't taken at 4.01 p.m. It was taken 
at 2048. So 2048, that's military time. That's 8 p.m. That's 848 p.m. Okay, and then the location. Again, I took that in West Kendall, Miami. So it's going to give me some general area, but it was more specifically around my mother-in-law's house, which was around here. We're kind of walking around the neighborhood, around 125th Avenue uh, in Miami, Florida. So now I have that information. Now, I have this one picture here, and that's great. It's going to upload, but I want to add a few more different angles and show you how else to analyze your call on Kaleidoscope. Another thing I didn't mention that you can mess with is the, the brightness, which is this thing that you can drag up and down, right? Um, see, if you put the brightness too high, it just looks all wonky. So you don't want it to be too bright. You want the details to kind of show and, and look good. Um, maybe even a little bit lower wouldn't have been so bad, but I think the way I had it is, is okay. And then also contrast. You can mess with contrast to make it so that it's, you know, I don't know. I'm not really 100% familiar with how all this works. I kind of just eyeball it. I'm sure the real experts out there know how to make this look perfect. Um, but you, you're still getting a good idea messing around with it yourself of, of what you want to see. Um, all right, so now I want to zoom in a little bit more on these calls. Right now I have it set so it shows me the whole sequence. I want to show more details. So I can click on this button, and then now I'm zoomed into the point where these are milliseconds here, right? This is one millisecond, this is two, four, six, eight, ten milliseconds. And you can kind of scroll through the call to show all of that detail. Um, and then it's up to you. How, what you want to post, you know, you can just kind of post one random example here, um, showing some of the calls and, and save that. And that works, right? So I'm going to come again here, put file, save screen. And, um, I'm just going to put, um, so this is compressed view. So I'm going to put compressed, see for compressed. And then I could put, I don't know, zoom or something like that since I'm so zoomed in. And then if you wanted to, um, sometimes this is more or less, uh, work, but you could, you know, start all the way at the beginning and then kind of, you know, take a screenshot right here. And then, you know, I'll, I'll use my finger or some, something else on the screen to mark where I am and then kind of scroll up to that next part and then take another screenshot here. So here, that would be a lot of screenshots, right? This is three, four, five, six. That would be, you know, it's too much work. It's not really necessary. You could zoom out a little bit if you want. Okay, and then it'll be like a little bit less and then maybe you could take a screenshot where you're zoomed in a little more like this. So this would be, you know, take the screenshot and name it blah, blah, blah one. Um, then this one you could name two. And that's just to kind of give more details. Um, right now what we're viewing is the full spectrum. So you can toggle that right here where it says toggle full spectrum view on or off. If you turn it off, it'll automatically open up what's called the zero cross view which will just kind of show you these little dots going through, um, I guess, the most important parts of the call or the strongest parts of the call. And that's the Kaleidoscope software doing that automatically. Um, I'm not sure what it means that these are kind of like this purplish pink color. I'm guessing that that's maybe one of the data points. Maybe that's where the, the strongest part of the frequency of the call is. Um, I'm not 100% sure if you press it again, it'll get rid of those little pink dots and only show them in white. But this is another, you know, screenshot that you can take um, for analyzing the call. So I'm going to give one of these examples too, right? So I'm going to name this one. Um, it's called Zero Cross, and I'll name it Zoom since I'm kind of zoomed in. And again, if I wanted to go through um, showing all the whole entire call sequence, I could do that. I can name this Zoom 1 and then scroll this down over here so that it's showing this part of the call and name that Zoom 2, etc. So it depends on how much detail and how, many, how much information you want to post with your, your observation. But I think for now, this is pretty good. So I'm going to add these other two that I just saved, right? So here they are now that I've saved the screenshots. So I'm going to add this here and then also this one. And you'll notice, I personally think it's better to kind of drag them one by one, especially if you're doing a sequence. But if you wanted to, you know, you can just press shift here, or I think there's also a way, right, where you, I'm not sure. Well, you could press shift and then you're holding down shift on the keyboard and then press the next one and then throw them all in there together. And then you could, you know, pile them up together, whichever way you want, 
All right? But right now, this would be a duplicate of this, so I'm going to erase it. I'm just kind of showing you. Okay? And then, so now I have three different files all showing um, either the whole call, which is what you're seeing here, or kind of like a zoomed-in piece of the call. So this right here is, you know, somewhere in here, just way more zoomed in on the um, on the the time axis, right? And then this one, I had zoomed out a little bit more, and it's showing what's called the zero cross, right? So these are both full spectrum views without the zero cross, which are the little dots. And then this is the zero cross, which you know someone might have a preference to uh, use when they're they're analyzing the call. So you're kind of just trying to make it as easy as possible for those bad experts out there to help you confirm your identifications, uh, etc. So uh, now I need to add the species name, right? And um, it, it identified it as UMOPS, right? Uh, iNaturals isn't going to really give you good suggestions here because I don't think the software knows how to identify spectrograms yet or how to associate them to a species. But uh, it's telling me UMOPS florid floridanus, I think it is. So I'm going to type it in here, UMOPS floridanus, okay? Or the Florida bonneted bat. Um, if you don't have experience identifying these calls yourself, and you know, you're just strictly going off what the echo meter app is telling you, I would recommend adding, you know, a comment just to make it clear that you didn't get to this ID on your own. It was done by the echo meter touch. Um, that just helps make it clear that, you know, you know that you're not an expert because you don't want to kind of like argue, I guess, or, or make it seem like, you know what you're talking about if you don't. Um, so I'm going to add in a comment here saying, uh, ID ID by echo, echo meter touch app. I am not sure if it is correct or not, right? That's something that I would recommend doing. Um, but in this case I do, I am very familiar with this call. It's easy to identify because it's the only one that'll show up at such a low frequency here in South Florida. Um, so I'm actually going to erase this comment before I upload it, but it's good for you to keep that in mind um, because there are other calls that I've recorded where it's been completely wrong, um, where the echo meter touch has given me a species that doesn't make any sense. Um, and that's something else that you need to consider figuring out what species are in your area so that your echo meter touch gives you more accurate identifications. Because if you know I had it set so that it's identifying all the species in North America, it might confuse this call for being another UMOP species or another species that I'm not familiar with that is um, found somewhere else. Okay. But um, yeah, that's basically it. That covers how to upload these. You want to include the audio file as well. You can, um, but a lot of times it's going to be a call that's not audible to human ears. Uh, in this case with the bonneted bat, it is a low enough frequency for um, most humans to hear it. I think if you're over 40 years old, you can't hear um, this particular frequency, uh, or this particular call, but, um, so you might want to include audio or you might not, it might kind of be a waste of time and space to include audio of a back call. That's, you know, a super high frequency above what we can hear, uh, which I think is the case with most bat, most bats. So, um, that pretty much covers it. If you have any questions, let me know. My iNaturalist username is Joe MDO. I'll include that in, um, I guess the little section where it explains what I'm doing. And uh, I hope this helps. Uh, let me think. Is there anything else I needed to cover here? I think that's just about everything. Um, oh, one more thing that's happened to me before where I've um, I kind of was clicking around all these buttons. And I didn't know what I was doing. Is I clicked this one over here, which is toggle waveform log linear view. That shows that has to do with this up here above your uh, spectrogram, right? If you click that, it kind of do this. I'm not really sure what's going on here personally. Um, not sure how it works. I know that this one is easier or at least easier for me to understand, right? It's kind of showing the power of the call. So where it is, I guess, loudest. Um, and this can also be used to identify the bats and it's going to be included in your screenshots, right? So here, obviously the call was kind of weaker. Maybe the bat was further away. And then it became stronger. And you'll also see that it becomes stronger on the full spectrum view, right? Here it's kind of faded and harder to see. And then here the colors are, are more uh, robust. They're, they're brighter. And um, it's easier to see them, right? So you can see that up here as well. So again, if you press this, I don't really know. I guess it's just giving you a different point of view. 
Um, but I would recommend uploading your observations with it on this view. Uh, it's a little bit easier to uh, interpret, I think, although I could be wrong. Um, one more thing that I didn't mention is you can click and drag across to kind of fill this little box with a call. And then you could press this button down here, which says analyze view selection. And then it'll give you a little pop up with some of the details of the call. Um, you might not be familiar with this stuff yet. I'm not really familiar, super familiar with it. I think I know some of it. I know DUR is duration, which is how long the call lasts. So it's 13.045 milliseconds. And I mean, you could try to figure that out by looking at it, right? This was around 70, I don't know, 73 or 70 something milliseconds up to 90 something. Well, this does it for you. It'll automatically figure out what's going on inside the box. Um, I think you have to only put one call in there for it to work. Uh, the FC, I, I, my understanding is it's some kind of like an average of where the, the strongest part of the call is maybe. And then F max is the highest point. So CSS 24. This is probably a little bit too weak for it to register. So it's saying 24.62. So it was somewhere around here that it's recognizing it as being the highest frequency the call gives. And then the lowest frequency, the F min is a minimum is 15.56. So it's registering that as being around somewhere around here, right? So this other part, I guess, is just not so significantly part of the call. It's really picking up on the most significant parts of the call. And you could use this data to compare it to other bat species to kind of make sure that the echo meter is giving you a good ID and then also maybe to differentiate between different species yourself. So this is a really cool and useful function that you can play around with and figure out. Um, you can click through here to go through the other calls. So you see this next one was also a bonneted bat, but it was a pretty weak call. I didn't get a whole lot going on there. Um, this one's also a little bit weak. It's also registering as the bonneted bat, but yeah, this is, um, it's a pretty cool way to look through some, some of your observations. This one, it looks like I got two bat calls, right? This one down here, it looks like it's the bonneted bat. And then this one it's registering as, um, the evening bat. I don't remember how to say the, the scientific name of it, but since it's kind of weak, this is where you might want to play around a little bit with this. See the brightness is going up and you can see a little bit more of the call that was hidden and then maybe play with the contrast a little bit. Um, but yeah, let, let's view, there it is, right? You can see the, the call and then here's the bonneted bat down here. You can see little streaks of it. One here, one here, one here, one here. And then this was all the, the evening bat. So there were two bats calling here and this is some kind of background noise, noise that was going on. Um, but yeah, you can do the same thing where you're going to take that screenshot, right? Let's go to the compressed time view and the same thing, file, save screen. And then, you know, you save it and you add it to iNaturalist and upload it. Um, all right. I hope that covers just about everything. If you have any questions, let me know. And thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful.